I have been working in and out intermittently on a project for a year and a half now. And I think it's time to show the progress I've done up to now. So right now we are on the Reawakens server, which has recently updated to 1.14. This was originally supposed to be my application build for a membership on the server, but since then it has turned into much more than that. It's an airship, and a pretty big one at that. If you exclude the ramps, which you can use to enter the airship, it is 103 blocks tall, 103 blocks wide, and 368 blocks long. Now, as crazy as the outside looks, it's actually not the part that's taken me the longest to build. Compared to the rest of the airship, it's only taken me a couple of weeks to make. Now, since the rest of the airship has taken me a year and a half to build, that's not a lot. I only spent a few hours on the outside. No, most of the work was done on the inside. So you get in via these access ramps and you get into the main hall. Up the stairs are the cabins. But for now, we'll stay on the ground floor. Over here, we have a dancing area. The main aspect is, of course, this colossal window, which is thick enough for people to dance on, but also allows you to observe the ground from inside the airship. Over here, we've got some other area where people can dance. This is, let's say, for people who are afraid of heights in the universe. Over here, we have a stage. Over here, people can give speeches, can give concerts, whatever. On the other side, is a nice piano. To each side of this dancing hall is the dining areas. This is where the passengers sit down and have their meals. Now the tables are associated to a cabin, and so like the cabins, there are exactly 10 four-people tables, 18 two-people tables, and four six-people tables. This adds to exactly 100 passengers which is the capacity of the airship. In addition to the dining areas, you have a bar. This is where you can sit down, relax, have a chit chat, and also have some fine drinks. And as you can see over here, we get a glimpse at what hasn't been built yet in this airship. This is for the ground floor. If we move up one level by using these fancy staircases, we reach the second floor. Now over here, there is the pathway which allows you to peek down at the window, but also access the two uh, movie theaters which are at the back. But first we'll talk about this. This part of the wall uh, is a progress bar for the journey. As you can see right now the light is at the bottom left because the airship, as you can see from the ramps, is docked, so it hasn't started its journey yet. And over here, you also have a top-down view of the airship. This is a reference to this wall over here in the Queen Mary, which of course is the same thing, except it is objectively better, but I can't really add this much detail into Minecraft. So we'll have to settle for this. To the back, we now have the movie theaters. For the seating, this movie theater has exactly 99 places, and same thing for the one on the other side. Why 99 places in an airship with 100 passengers? Because this way, we can have two separate movies shown at the same time, and if 99 people want to watch one film while one person wants to watch another film, that's possible. But if all 100 people want to watch exactly the same film at the same time, well then you can just play the same film on both movie theaters and have 50 passengers on one side and 50 on the other, or whatever. Below the seats is a snack bar. This is where you can purchase some snacks and some drinks to eat and drink while you can relax and watch the movie. But there is more to this room actually. If you go to the back, you can see that there's a bit of redstone over here. By example, you can activate the movie projector. 
which will show the film. But before showing the film, you need to turn off the lights. Like this. Now, with the lights, actually, there is a cool thing about them. Now the lights are on, I'll turn them off. As you can see, supposedly, they're supposed to turn off at exactly the same time. The reason why there's a bit of delay on this side... Okay, so there's someone in my airship. The reason why there's a delay on this side is simply due to lag. But because of the redstone, actually, they all turn off at exactly the same time. But the way they turn on is even better. It's a sweeping motion. The way this is achieved is with pistons. So every light in here is connected via pistons. And the trick with pistons is that if you turn them on, well, they'll do a sweeping motion with the lights. However, with pistons, when you turn them off, you can actually get a zero tick uh, repeater. Which basically means that I can turn off all of these lights at exactly the same time. Quite cool. And as I said before, there are actually two of these movie theaters. They are connected at the top with the controls for the movie p uh, projectors, and also over here with this storage area, which stores extra food and drinks for the stack bars. But otherwise, this other movie theater is just a uh, a mirror copy of the other one. As we move to the back, over here is a library. And looks like there's actually someone in the library right now. Oh, he's camera shy. Anyway, in this library, you can just borrow some books, relax, read them, and also admire a top-down view of the airship again. Over here is also a jukebox, which allows you to play preferably soothing music. I mean, this is a library. You don't play party music in here, let's say. If we move back over here, we've got a desk where you can borrow return books and also purchase some. To the other side of the airship is the games room. Over here, you can borrow and return board games. All over here is the main game room. Over here, you've got coat hangers, some pool tables, some spots where you can hang your pool sticks. I can't remember the name, sorry. Over here is a game that's called over here Mississippi. Don't know if that's called if, if that's how it's called elsewhere, but over here it's called Mississippi. Over here you've got two ping pong tables. And over here we have a table where you can play cards. At the back of the game room is a lounge where you can sit down, relax, admire the view of a completely broken copy of this airship, and listen to some more music. Then as we move back to the front, we get to the cabins. On this level you only have the ten four people cabins. So, three of them have been finished, with their copies being pasted on the other side. And they are these ones. Now, at the base of the cabin, you have the kitchen. Now, of course, the main place where you eat would be the dining areas. But if you want to have some privacy, you can just instead eat in your cabin. There's everything you need to make some food. Over here, we have the bathroom. You've got a bath to wash yourself, you've got a toilet to do your business, and you've got a sink to wash your hands. Now, I would add a shower head to the bathtub, but I don't really know of a way with the spatial constraints I already have. If we move above, we've got a living room where you can sit down, chat and relax, admire another bit of airship. And you have the bedrooms. I've got a visitor. Anyway, you've got the bedrooms. 
Now, over here you have a giant TV screen. Now, a giant TV screen in your bedroom as you're going to sleep isn't ideal, but it allows me to create this segue to an explanation for many of the aesthetic decisions I've made in this airship. The thing is that behind this screen is a red wall. Oopsie. There we go. So as you see in this case, I didn't really choose to add a giant TV screen in here for aesthetic purposes. It was an out of necessity. And that's the reason why I've done many things in this airship. It's not done to look good. It's just done due to spatial constraints. I like to have different rooms look differently, you know, not have everything look the same. But at the same time, due to how tight the spaces are, you need to find ways to make this work. Another thing, which is easier to spot in here, with this painting over here, and this one, is that some decorations I've added are actually to hide some lighting. Again, with this painting, the two paintings actually cover exactly the same blocks, and the reason why they cover it is because behind one of these blocks, can't remember which, is actually a glowstone block. So to give a better ambience to this cabin, I've added some hidden light sources. I can also, by example, say that there is a glowstone over here, I believe. Exactly. So that's why there's carpet over here, it's just to hide the fact that there's a hidden light source there. Finally, we have this cabin, which was finished. And this one was by far the hardest due to its dimensions. It is very narrow and very long. I managed to pull it through, but let's just say I'm, I don't like the version of myself that first created the layout for these cabins, because this room is just nightmarish. This room was just a nightmare to build, but I did pull it through. If we move at the front, we've got the bridge, or in this case I decided to call it a gondola. But in reality, it's a bridge. Now, I could spend a really long time explaining everything there is about this bridge, so I'll try to keep it short. If we move up here... Holy Jesus Christ! Okay. Anyway... Over here we have a radio room. This is where the radio guy will communicate with other airships, other air bases, air control towers, whatever. And he will also then communicate with the rest of the bridge. Hello. If we move down over here we have an access to the future, to some of the future crew quarters. Over here we've got a table where people can sit down, and over here we've got a giant map. As I've said before, we are on the reawaken server, and so this is in fact a map of the creative spawn area of the server. It's pretty huge actually. Now over here, we've got a seat which allows men to look closer at some points of the map by being able to move up and down, left and right. Over here then we have some dials. We've got more dials over here, and as you can see from the names, every single one of them serves a purpose. I won't go into detail about what each one does, because then we'd be here for hours. So instead, I'll just move on. Over here, we have a window which can be used while landing the airship. And over here, we've got another top-down view of the airship. Of course, I'm very fond of those. Over here, as I've said before, there are some more dials. We've got the controls to the airship, and yet again... Outside of these radars over here, every single detail in this bridge, from the dials to the controls to the indicators, all serve a purpose. Over here at the front we've got more seats for some relief crew to sit down while the main crew does their job of piloting the airship, of course. And of course over here we've got the main window to look in front of the airship. Finally, as we move up to the third floor, we've got the two and six people cabinets over here. And pretty much nothing was done on them yet. 
So there's nothing really of interest in this level, but as you can move up, you've got over here the one of the future lounges. There's going to be one on each side of the airship, and they give me an excuse to have these giant windows on the side of the airship, which I think look very cool. So over here we've going to have we're going to have some lounges where people can again sit down and relax. And that is pretty much all that has been built yet on this airship. But that's not all that is planned. If you go to the top, from these lounges over there, we're going to have access to another lounge. And this lounge is also going to be an observatory, which will allow people to gaze at the stars during the night, of course. Over at the back, we're going to have a kitchen over there. We're going to have a cargo area over here. Over here, this most of the airship is going to be filled with gas tanks, of course, as a normal airship would. We're going to have an electric room. And at the very back, we're going to have an engine room. Because, of course, this airship has several engines. There are six of them over here, and we've got a main propeller engine at the back. Now that's for the main airship, but what about these side ones? What are they? I'll answer your question, even if you didn't ask it. This over here is just a clone that I created to test something about this hallway over here. And once that's finished, I'm going to delete it. As for the other airship, there's actually a pretty nice story behind it. Their airship was originally created to try to fix an issue related to the cabins in the main one. Now, quickly enough, I realized that the solution I was thinking about using actually would never work due to the complexity of what I've built up to now. So, with this airship serving no purpose, I decided to delete it. However, I went about it in a pretty wrong way. See, I selected the entire volume of the airship, and then I did slash slash set air. That was a mistake, because it turns out that the volume was so big that it crashed the entire server. When I logged back on, this was a result. A completely glitched airship. And I liked it so much, I decided to keep it. So yeah, this is what I've been up to for the past year and a half, and as you can see from what I've mentioned, I've done a lot of work on this airship, but there is still a lot of work that has to be done. A lot. As I've mentioned before, I've got the cargo bay to build, I've got the crew quarters to build, I've got the kitchen to build, I've got some toilets to build and for the dining areas, I've got an electric room to build, I've got an engine room to build, I've got three lounges to build, I've got a ton of cabins that I have yet to build, and then I have to fill the entire airship with gas tanks. So let's say I've still got a lot of work to do, this airship won't be finished before several more months. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, so thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.